This one is an uh, engineer from Japan, uh, chassis bound set. Uh, what's uh, what's the number of of this? Uh, number eight ninety five. Uh, screw type uh, punching tool set. Uh, and in the stamp. An indispensable tool for training such chassis as used in radio, television sets, communicators in particular, and uh, other metal sheets in general. And uh, here we've got uh, instructions uh, how to use this. This set is pretty modular. It has... Um, it has five cutters for 16, 18, 20, 25 and 30 millimeter diameters and it has uh, modular dies. Uh, we, we have uh, three dies um, that uh, engage with uh, the cutters. This uh, disengages with the 30 millimeter cutter. Disengages with uh, 25. Oops. But there is also an adapter for the smaller cutters. Uh, 18 and 20 This side would be the die for 18 and uh, in order to use this uh, you have to use it on the 30 millimeter side of uh, the main part uh, that has an uh, abutment for the screw and there's also a smaller die adapter for 16 and I guess this could also be used for 18 no not really so this is 16 only 25 to 16 So, how do you use this thing anyway? Let's try to make an 18mm hole for a typical novel socket. We've got the piece of aluminum. To make things easy, I will, uh, I will do it. Uh, in uh, aluminum so the first thing I would do is uh, making a uh, hole uh, to accommodate uh, the screw the screw is uh, one centimeter in diameter and in order to make the hole it's pretty easy uh, I will just uh, I will just uh, enlarge uh, this hole got a step through I always remove the chaff from the other side, and from both sides actually. So I've got uh, this uh, one centimeter hole, and I want to make 
a proper chassis hole at 18 millimeters. In order to do that, um, I need to drive the screw from the from the die side. I will apply some uh, Vaseline uh, or paraffin oil uh, to lubricate the joint between the, the screw and the die. And uh, this is the die side. This goes through the hole. And now the cutter side. You can see that... Uh, let's zoom on in... Uh, that the cutter has uh, two teeth uh, pressing against um, the sheet metal. Just like that. And on the other side we've got a square square end. Uh, I don't have any I don't have any object that uh, oh did I ac did I accidentally use the 20 mm cutter instead of 18? That would be a failure. Here we go. Proper 18. So uh, the 16 goes back to the box. The set also contains a reamer for making the holes uh, large enough to accommodate the screw, but uh, I've got the step through. I need no stinking reamer. So here we go. Oh, and uh, lubricate the cutter side as well. And now it's just a matter of turning and turning and turning and turning. If it's aluminum, it's pretty easy. You can see that those teeth uh, have bitten into the sheet metal. And we are keep on turning as long as uh, the metal is not completely broken. And this takes a lot of force. Use the first look. And now I could hear a click. I'm not sure if you also did. But uh, this would mean that um, the cutter has bitten through the sheet metal on one side almost completely. And now, on both sides, all that remains is uh, removing the cutter from the hole. This is also done uh, with uh, the screws that pulls the cutter into the die. Now it's a lot easier to turn this and now the die has fallen out. Recovered. So this would be the new hole. It's a teeny tiny bit jacked uh, on the die side. Uh, it's probably because of uh, a slight mismatch, uh, a slight play between uh, the cutter and the die. 
Now what remains is uh, removing the cutter from the screw. It will be a, a teeny tiny bit harder than uh, screwing it on because uh, there is the remainder metal that we just uh, cut out of the sheet. Pretty funky. And this is what uh, it looks, uh, this is how it looks like uh, using the engineer set at 18. But this uh, vacuum tube uh, socket, then the novel socket, uh, it is in fact uh, slightly over 18. It is uh, 18.35. And uh, the cutter being 18.0, it was not enough to do the, the whole uh, that could accommodate the tube sockets. I still need a slightly larger hole. And that's where another cutter comes in handy. I've got three of them. Those cutters are individual cutters. One of them is 18.6, uh, the other one is 28.4, and the third one is 37. This one uh, is for the novel tube sockets. This one uh, would be for the octal tube sockets, and um, this one would be for the larger ones, like the old uh, intercontinental um, or 8 plus 3 German steel tube socket like this. I'm building an old school amplifier on this chassis. So um, that's why I've, I've got this outlandish uh, chassis punch. But uh, we'll go with this one to make a, another hole in uh, in the chassis right beside uh, the one that uh, I just made so this needs a uh, 10 millimeter hole and as before I will just enlarge it I also have another reaming tool. But I seem to have uh, hidden it somewhere else. So, ready for punching? This cutter was retrofitted with uh, a uh, flat bearing to minimize uh, the friction between the screw head and the die. That's a pretty handy thing to have. And again, uh, the cutter here, it has three teeth uh, instead of two. It should be a little bit uh, more stable when uh, when cutting. Again, some oil. And uh, for those cutters, I've got a uh, handy trick using a ratchet wrench. Thank you. 
I can uh, work on uh, your longer arm uh, having to use less force or uh, have the same force uh, exert uh, the, the same uh, more uh, have uh, exert uh, more force here than uh, with that uh, short uh, with that short bar making this kind of uh, cutters and uh, this kind of chassis punches uh, way more practical uh, when uh, cutting through the steel chassis this is the new hole 18.6 and the Novel socket fits like a glove. Thing of beauty, joy forever. I also got a piece of steel. This is uh, an uh, old uh, panel from uh, an, uh, that uh, Unistam G9. Uh, device that uh, I did a teardown video of. Those holes, uh, I guess they are 10 millimeters. I could use one of them uh, to demonstrate uh, how this uh, how this 18.6 uh, uh, cutter works uh, on a steel plate. The thickness of uh, of this plate is uh, one and a half millimeter. And this one was uh, also one and a half, but aluminum. So now let's try the steel chassis. Then the regular steel, not the stainless steel. And uh, we've got stainless steel. This takes a lot more time and effort. One is broken, the second one is broken, the third one is broken, and it's out. So, cutting for steel, it's uh, not all that hard, it can be done. Now to remove this part of metal. Looks like a bent washer. So, this was just experimenting. But here comes the real job. 
I'm building an amplifier where I want those two tube sockets. First I will remove the tag board. Uh, I don't want it to get into the way and I don't want it damaged. The tag board uh, also comes from the Unistom G9. So it's just a uh, discombobulation and reuse of parts situation. And now uh, I've got the spots marked. I will use this lovely Starret 18 uh, I uh, automatic center punch. Punched. Oiled. I've got a uh, cobalt uh, drill for stainless steel work uh, and uh, most of the general training I will be doing with uh, cobalt steel. One is done. And the one, the other one is also done. It's important to use uh, oil uh, when drilling in stainless steel, otherwise uh, the drill bit will just slip on the, on the metal, making it almost impossible to drill the hole. So we need to enlarge this to 10 millimeters. job for this drill. But it's done. Yeah, it's very warm, uh, almost hot, too hot to touch, as expected.
there's some tough on the other side and I might have to remove this tag board in order to access it with uh, the cutter but I will try not to first of course I will also uh, counter drill to remove the chaff shouldn't be doing it this way but <laughs> and now the screw the bearing the die the cutter some oil and the wrench By the way, what was the thickness of this sheet metal? Again, one and a half. This takes a lot more effort than the regular steel. One is through. Now I'm doing it while standing in order to be able to exert more force on the wrench And time for another hole. We're in.
sometimes it's hard to remove um, this uh, metal ring. So that would be a little video about the chassis punches, the thing that I wanted to feature for a long time. Before I even got those punches, I used the step drill up to 28mm for the octal tubes and it was super pesky to use. Uh, a lot of chaffing, a lot of uh, force uh, needed to drill the, the chassis, a lot of uh, metal filings, uh, a lot of times and and sometimes accidents. <laughs> I remember if you want to follow through on uh, my videos and uh, do any mechanical fabrication works, um, you really should be know what you're doing. If you can do it better than me, like uh, using a uh, drill press and uh, properly um, attached chassis, you definitely should. This is uh, this is what I have available in my lab. But <laughs> if you can do it better, do it better. Even better, if uh, if you can. Um, use some uh, computer numerically controlled techniques like uh, milling or water jet cutting or laser cutting you'll be better off uh, making making chassis in an uh, automated way but uh, this is how um, a chassis can be made uh, with hands with love Before I uh, I got those punches, I used the step drill, like I mentioned, and uh, in my early days uh, in amp making, before I even had a uh, step drill, I used to make a row of holes, then uh, punching it, uh, punching the bridges uh, between those holes uh, with a uh, screwdriver and a hammer, and then smoothing the jagged edges uh, with a file it took a lot of time it was very tiring it was very work intensive but uh, as a last resort you can still do that it's very simple it doesn't take any sophisticated tools but sophisticated tools uh, they are to make work easier they are there to make work easier, they, um, either, they are there to make work faster, less tiring, more efficient, then if you can get them, why not get them? So I did. And for the moment, I've got a few more projects coming up in my lab. Uh, got parts for one. You can see the real stuff. This is gonna be a speaker level adjustment device. But that's gonna be another story. And yet another story is a uh, Commodore 64 power supply uh, rebuild project. Uh, that does away with um, the original power supply and disadvantages um, like uh, those power supplies tended to fail uh, catastrophically to the, um, to the computer so uh, better safe than sorry I'd like to make a new one that uh, if it fails, it fails safely but uh, that's another story by the way like my new lava lamp. Got it from Hackerspace Pomorza. <laughs> it's cute. So for now on, stay determined and carry on.